Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor and I share these what's for dinner videos every week. In these videos, I share meal ideas to hopefully give you some new recipes to try and to motivate you to cook more for your family. All the recipes that I made this week were super easy, but all of them were delicious. So I hope you find some new things to try. And if you like these videos, I hope that you will subscribe down below. Any recipes I mentioned will be in the description box. Now let's go ahead and get into this week's what's for dinner. It is Friday and tonight for dinner we are having sandwiches. Uh, we went to the zoo earlier today and so we're very tired and wanted something very easy. So I went to the Publix store that's near us the other day when I went to Aldi and I got some bread from the bakery and some lunch meat from the deli so we've got some ham and some roast beef so the kids just have some ham and cheese on some Publix French bread Elijah's got some barbecue chips strawberries and cucumbers Lily has the same sandwich with some pretzels strawberries and cucumbers and then me and Andy are going to have a roast beef I've got roast beef on there with some mustard some provolone cheese some mayo and some lettuce and tomato and then I've got barbecue chips and some cucumbers as well Andy has not made his yet he is actually asleep we both took a nap and I just haven't woken him up yet but I'm about to wake him up and see if he wants to eat dinner but that is going to be our dinner for Friday we had fun at the zoo and I'm so glad that we planned an easy meal to come home and eat Saturday night for dinner, we had nachos, so I started off by browning a pound of ground beef with some taco seasoning, and then it was time to open up our big can of Rico's nacho cheese. This can is like six or seven dollars at Sam's Club, and I can get like eight bags of nacho cheese out of it and I just store them in the freezer until I'm ready to use it. It freezes really well and it heats up great. So this night I had actually opened the can but then I had to divide it up into those bags because we were out of our freezer stock. And then for our nachos we had some sour cream, some lettuce, some pico, some cilantro, and a bunch of different salsas. The kids don't like too much on their nachos. Elijah just likes cheese, meat, and lettuce, and beans when we have it, but I forgot beans this night. Lily likes to add salsa and cilantro to hers. And then mine looks pretty much the same as Lily's, but I added some sour cream and some jalapeno. Sunday night we did pizza bagels, and this is something we love to do. Um, I used to do it a lot more often, but I haven't done it very often lately. So I just take some bagels, cut them in half like you usually would, and then top them with some spaghetti sauce or pizza sauce. This is marinara sauce. I don't know why I said spaghetti sauce. <laughs> but um, yeah, you top it with some sauce and then some mozzarella cheese and whatever toppings you want. We just do pepperoni and then stick them in the oven. I did these on 400 for about 10 minutes. You could also do them in the air fryer, but unfortunately I'm having issues with my air fryer. Um, Cuisinart is sending me a new one because mine just stopped, stopped working. It won't, it won't turn on. So yeah, they're sending me a new one because it has like a three year warranty and their customer service is great. So I can say that. Um, oh, I also put on some garlic powder and Italian seasoning on these as well. And it was really, really good. And I just always serve these pizza bagels with like a salad or fresh veggies and this night we did fresh veggies. We had sweet peppers, carrots, cucumbers, mini grape tomatoes, and then some ranch for dipping. It is Monday night and tonight for dinner we are trying a recipe called baked pasta and pink sauce with Italian sausage. This recipe is from Plain Chicken. I have never been disappointed in recipes that I've tried from Plain Chicken. And this one like pulled me in because it's got quite a few ingredients it looks like, but it's pretty easy to put together. So I've got some Italian sausage here. I'm gonna brown that. I've got my cast iron pan heating up for that. And then I also have some salted water coming to a boil for some pasta. We're gonna cook up 
um, a whole box of pasta. This is 12 ounces. She says 16, but bow tie comes in 12. So I've got bow tie. She said any kind of like small pasta or whatever you want, really. Penne. She did, I think, small shells. Oli doesn't have small shells. So we went with a bow tie. So I'm going to cook that up and the sausage up and drain off any grease. And then basically we're just going to mix everything else together. So I've got a cup and a half of heavy whipping cream. We're going to do three quarters of a cup of ricotta cheese. This whole container of balls of mozzarella, like mozzarella pearls. I am going to drain off that water. Um, add those in. Some marinara sauce. I used like two tablespoons of this for the pizza bagels last night. So I'm just going to use the rest of the jar because like hardly anything is missing. And then some Italian seasoning, some red pepper flakes, and some Italian style cheese. One cup will get mixed in with everything and then one cup will get sprinkled on top because once I mix it all together, it's going to go in a casserole dish and go in the oven and bake for like 25 minutes. Sounds super easy. So hopefully it'll be super delicious too. got my noodles drained and rinsed and I always cook my noodles um like a little bit under what the box says like this said 12 to 14 minutes I only did 10 minutes because um anytime I do that anytime I'm cooking it in the oven like double cooking the noodles because I don't want my noodles to be super mushy so as I said I'm just gonna add everything together in here and then transfer it to a casserole so I've got my sausage that I browned and I used to not like Italian sausage. If you've been here a while, you might remember that. But lately, I've been liking it. Um, I don't know. I just, I, your taste buds change, I guess. I, I know this because I used to not like a lot of things. And now I do. So we like Italian sausage now. Nobody has complained since I started using it. And I've used it a couple times in the last, like, two months. All right, now I've got my jar of marinara sauce, whatever red sauce you prefer. And then about three quarters of a cup of ricotta cheese. I didn't measure this out exactly, but it's it's close. I feel like in a casserole like this, it doesn't have to be exact. And then we've got one and a half cups of heavy cream. We've got our mozzarella balls which I drained. And then it says about two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Again, not gonna measure. We'll just put a bunch of that. And I'm also gonna add some garlic powder because, you know, this has no garlic in it and I am not okay with that. Where is my garlic powder? There we go. We'll add some garlic powder in here as well because we love garlic. I should have done some minced garlic. Like cooked with the meat, that would have been really good. Um, and then it says red pepper flakes to taste to give it a little bit of spice. I'll just do a little bit of that, not too much. And then about a cup of shredded Italian style cheese. So this is mozzarella, provolone, romano, parmesan, and asiago. So about a cup mixed in with everything. And then we'll sprinkle about a cup on the top as well. So gonna give that a good mix and then transfer it to a greased nine by 13.
Okay, and again, this is gonna go in the oven at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes until it's nice and bubbly and the cheese is melted. And here's what that looked like when it came out. I just let it cool for about five minutes before serving it up and we just had it with a salad on the side. This was delicious and I will definitely make it again. Tuesday night we had chicken sandwiches and I cooked my chicken the same way like I always cook it for chicken sandwiches or chicken salads or pretty much any time I need to just like pan fry some chicken. This is how I do it. I start off by heating up a little bit of olive oil and butter in my cast iron pan and I season my chicken all over with Badia Complete and Tony's Creole seasonings. Those are my top two like seasonings. I use them for everything but especially this chicken it makes this chicken taste so good. Andy told me it's like almost as good as Waffle House chicken and if you've had Waffle House's grilled chicken you know that's like a compliment. So this is as close as I can get to their chicken at home. And then I just fry it on each side for probably about five minutes. Um, let it get a nice crust and make sure it's cooked through. We had these chicken sandwiches on the brioche buns from Aldi and Andy and I had lettuce and tomato on ours. And also I did some of that chipotle aioli. And then we had Kraft macaroni and cheese on the side and some fresh veggies. And the kids just had mayonnaise and cheese on their sandwich. It is Wednesday and tonight for dinner we are having the like pepper jelly chili sauce meatballs. We like to do it with pepper jelly because it gives it a little bit of spice. And I have this hot pepper jelly that we had picked up at one of the Amish stores in Wisconsin. You can use grape jelly if you don't want any or not too much spice because there is a little bit of spice in the chili sauce. But if you don't want too much spice, you could just do grape jelly. Um, I am going to use this homemade one from the Amish store. Um, this is the one that I usually get at Kroger, but I heard and I saw on the Kroger app that it's like discontinued, like they don't carry this one anymore. So that's disappointing. I saw some people saying Trader Joe's has pepper jelly um, and then like Amazon has pepper jelly. So whatever pepper jelly you want, if you do want pepper jelly. So I'm gonna do this whole nine ounce jar and then I'm going to add in this 12 ounce jar of chili sauce. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to kind of rinse out the bottle, add that in it as well, and then cook this on low all day. Uh, we like to serve this over mashed potatoes. Um, you could do rice, but I prefer mashed potatoes. So that is what we are doing. Super easy. As I said, it'll just cook on low all day. Okay, to go with our meatballs tonight, I am making mashed potatoes. As I said, I like to make my mashed potatoes in my Instant Pot ever since I got an Instant Pot because it's super simple and easy. So I start off by putting the little privet thing down in there and then I add a cup of water, about a cup. Um, I think the requirements are that you're supposed to have like half a cup to a cup of liquid. If you didn't have as many potatoes, I would recommend doing less water. Um, I have about two pounds, I would say, of potatoes. Most of them I have quartered. A couple of them I have halved because they were smaller. So I'm just gonna put these in here on top of the trivet. You wanna make sure you don't cut them too small that they fall through the holes of the trivet, but um, you also don't wanna cut them too big that they don't cook in the amount of time. Because I have had that happen where I cut them too big and they were still kinda hard. Uh, and then they didn't mash properly. So try not to cut them too big. So I got those in there. Now I'm just gonna sprinkle some salt all over the top, pop the lid on, and then this cooks on manual, high pressure for 11 minutes. After the 11 minutes, I will do a quick release. Okay, after all the steam has been released, 
open the lid. And now I'm going to use some tongs to just pull out this trivet. Ooh. Careful not to burn yourself. And then I will use a masher, mash them up. Oh, I forgot. Usually I don't use my nonstick pot for this. Usually I use my stainless steel one. So the metal doesn't scratch it. Hopefully it doesn't mess it up too bad. I mean, it's not like sharp or anything. Um, and then once they're all mashed, I will stir in some milk or heavy cream, sour cream, butter, and then season to taste with salt and pepper. That's it. I don't measure it. I just, you know, taste it as I do it. Kind of see how it looks to see how much milk I need to add. Because, you know, the more potatoes you have, like, the more milk you're going to need. And I, I don't, like, measure out my potatoes, so it just, it's going to vary every single time since you're not going to have the exact same amount of potatoes every single time. And sometimes I do um, peel them. You can peel them if you want. I just didn't feel like it today, so I did not do that today. And... You can use whatever potatoes you want. I just had golden potatoes on hand, but usually I will do russet potatoes because that's usually what I have on hand. Okay, to go with this, I am making some green beans as well, and I promised I would share how I season them when I made them again. So I just take a can of green beans. I do not drain them or anything. I just use the liquid from the can. If you prefer to drain them, drain them, and then you could add water or you could add chicken broth. Um, I just like to add um, a little bit of the Nor chicken bouillon. I don't do too much, maybe half a teaspoon. I don't measure it ever. I just sprinkle a little bit over the top and then I add in some butter, probably about a tablespoon. Again, I don't really measure it. I just take a little bit, plop it on in there. And then from here, sometimes it varies. Um, this is the Badia Complete. Um, I've also done the pleasing seasoning lately, um, but our favorite is the Badia Complete. I just do some of that. And sometimes I just stop with that. Sometimes I add some extra garlic. I am going to add some extra garlic tonight. And then some black pepper. And I just cook these on like medium low for probably about five to 10 minutes. Okay, here is dinner tonight. I like to put my meatballs on top of the mashed potatoes, but the kids like theirs on the side so they can kind of eat them separate if they want. And then we've got our green beans. And as I mentioned before, this is a favorite. We love this, um, highly recommend it. If you like those like grape jelly and chili sauce meatballs that people usually do as like appetizers, um, try it with mashed potatoes or rice, try it with a pepper jelly. It is so good. It is Thursday and tonight for dinner we are doing buffalo chicken quesadillas and I forgot to do, to like thaw my chicken either last night or this morning and so I pulled it out late today. I did get it thawed out but usually I make my chicken in the crock pot so I obviously didn't have time to do that. So instead I was like, you know what, I'll just throw it in the instant pot. So it's thawed out, two chicken breasts and I like to add one packet of ranch seasoning and then some buffalo sauce. I have the rest of the Sweet Baby Ray's one 
So I'm just gonna add that all over the top of this and then cook it on manual high pressure for 15 minutes and then let it do a natural release for five minutes. And then when it's done, I'll just shred it up and make some chicken quesadillas. Okay, here is the finished dinner. Here is the kids' quesadilla. As you saw, they just had chicken and cheese. And they got a bunch of veggies. We've got carrots, sweet peppers, some tomatoes, cucumbers, and then some ranch to dip. And then mine is basically the same, but you saw I put some extra buffalo sauce on my quesadilla because one, that sweet baby rays isn't very hot, but two, like the ranch also like tones down the hotness. Um, so I added a little bit more spice with that um, buffalo wild wings buffalo sauce. And then I've got some cucumbers and carrots and ranch as well. And that is going to be dinner for Thursday. And that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. If you plan on trying any of these recipes, let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye!